Okay, this is going to be uh, my first video on my on this new series I'm going to start. It's going to be basic intro to programming. Um, we are, we are going to start with the Java language because I think if you understand Java, it all your skills will transfer over when you get to the other languages. Okay, first of all, we're going to get the tools that we're going to need to use um, before we start on anything. So, what you want to do? Just go to Google. Okay, so we're here at Google. You need to download Eclipse. So you just come here, go to downloads. Uh, there's multiple versions. Um, just get. Let's see which one I recommend. Let's see the testers IDE. Oh, here's a standard version, Eclipse standard. Just download that one. I have 64 bit, so I'm gonna get 64 bit. So just download it. It's gonna want it to download, so okay. And let it download the thing. Okay, so after you've um, okay, this thing just is work. And it's not working. Basically, after you've downloaded um, Eclipse, you, you might get an error if you run it, and it'll say, uh, our Java runtime environment um, is needed. And even if you already have Java installed, this still might pop up. And the reason is, you could be um, like me, and you are running a 64-bit version, and you have 32-bit version Java installed. That is fine. All you need to do is to go download the 64-bit version, and you will be, and then it will work. I have been stuck on this for a long time, so you just have to download it. Um, it says uh, online installation Java updates are not available for, for architectures. So let me see, running offline installer. So we we're going to get the offline installer. Then um, here we go. We have to get the offline installer. So just download it, and you got to install this. So. That's fine. Install. Let this thing do its thing. Okay, and you have to successfully blah 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 installed it. We don't want to do anything there. There we go, now it runs. I guess it's called Kepler now. They have new versions that come out, I guess. Okay, so it's just going to um, make a workspace where it's going to default on all your basic uh, files. So keep in mind where this is. Don't forget it, and just leave it at, at you know where it is, and don't mess with it. Now, you, you'll 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 know exactly where it is. So every single time, if you mess with it every single time, you're not going to know where your files are. So just leave that alone. First, we're going to go over variable. Okay, so we went over tools. Eclipse is going to be our tool. We're going to go over variables. Blah blah blah. So it has this crap that comes up. Uh, you don't want to use their tutorials. Just get, get that away. Get the, yeah, get rid of that. Go to file new. What we want to do is we want to make a new. Um, I can't remember which one we're going to start with. Class or project. We'll just go with uh, pro projects if that works. Yep. We're 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 going to make a really uh, basic. This is what all programmers first do with when they start programming. They make a program say hello, hello world. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna make it a hello, say hello. Yeah, just hello. Create separate folders. Use project folder as root. For you want to click this one. You don't want to click that one. This is gonna fuck you up. This is what all my colleagues, you know, fuck up on is they don't know how to start their projects and basically they fuck themselves up. So use project folder as root. Blah blah blah. Because yeah, it'll be it'll, it'll make a lot of sense afterwards. So I guess you just you can just, you, can, you can just click finish from here. I guess. So now you have this. You know what do you do from here? So now you just go to make and you make a new you make a new class. And this is just going to be um, 
we'll call it main. And we want to create it. This is going to create our main methods for us. Um, in the future, you, you will be uh, you will, you are going to be expected to know how to create your own method, your own whatever, right? So that's what we want. And click finish. And now you see the main uh, method has been automatically created for us. This is what we want. We, we we don't have to worry about making it ourselves. Okay. Now the first thing I want you guys to do now. Now I'm showing you this. It's best to follow with me. Don't just watch me. If you just watch me and then you do it later, you're gonna fuck up because you don't know you don't know what the hell you're doing. So if you don't know what I just did, I I know I made these. Um, this new project and the new class, I suggest you pause the video, you know, install this thing, and then go back and then do everything I just did. Because if you don't do that, you're screwed anyways. Okay, first of all, we're just going to make the computer. Okay, so in addition to variables, we're just going to go um, just, you know, output. You know, ha have the thing speak to the user, okay? We're, we, are, we just want to have the computer say hello. So system.out.print. Hello, world. Okay, what did I just do? You know, how, how did I know how to do all this? And why is it, and why is it giving me an error here? Uh, misplaced constructs. What did I do? Did I do that wrong? Oh, I see what I did. The main method starts here, so take this the lesson for me because I guess I just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. This is why it's very important to pay attention to what you do. The reason why he's giving me an error is the main method. Now this is going to have to do with scope. Now this is going to be very important later on. So we're also going to talk about scope. And this isn't just one of them, but like the reason why it's giving me an error and it doesn't make any sense is because I just put this code in the middle of nowhere because your main method. Actually, no. This is the class. The class is here, but the method is inside here, and and you see my code is outside of the method, so it doesn't make any sense. And remember what I told you before. Your program is going to start at main, no matter what. So if you don't put it in main, nothing is going to happen. Okay. Now let me get into more detail. Why did I, you know, uh, how did I know to put this? Basically, for now, you you won't understand what the system dot out dot print is. So I just want you to memorize it. Memorize system dot out dot print. This is um, just for Java. So if we're talking about Java and uh, and you're printing something out, this is the statement to use. System dot out dot print. Okay. So this is the statement to use. Now there is going to be a okay. Having that said, just keep that in mind. Now, why did I put two quotes here? I put two quotes here and here because what's inside the quotes are actual are literals. They're not variables. We're gonna go into variables next. What it means is, I want it to print out exactly as I enter at in what's inside the two uh, quotes. So hello world, and it's going to print that out exactly as I put it in. Okay. So you know you know what? How do I you know what's what's the proof, right? How, how do you know what I'm saying is true? So well, you can click this thing and run it for yourself. So it's going to ask you, oh, what do you want to save? Just whatever, right? And you can sit down at the console, hello world. Okay, now. Now I'm going to show you why or the difference between hello.print. Paste this. What if I did this? What happens if I type in system.out.print ln and, and instead of the print? What does that mean? This may basically means after this line, move the cursor to the next line. So if instead I took off this and I did the uh, ran it again, it says hello world, hello world. It says it twice. Well, how do you you know what if you want you know this to go down? So you know I mean would it work if I put it down here? Well, run it and you'll see. No, it won't. Because this 
ln affects the line after it. So if you put it over here, nothing happens to this line. This line doesn't do anything. You have to put it to the command above. So you put it above, and when the code runs here, and it says print ln, it moves it to the next line for the next code. So like after, after the first one, imagine the cursor here moving to the next line, and then it performs this. So you're going to have hello world, next line, hello world instead of how, it's, how it is now, which is two hello worlds put together. See, that is the difference between print ln and print. Now you know the differences. Okay, now we're going over this really fast because, just because. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of that. Okay, now, now that we've gone over, you know, basic output, we are going to go over variables now. This is very important. I don't. Yeah, you know, this cannot be, you know, stressed on how important you, you understand the concept of variables. Now, there are different types of variables. There are integers, longs, um, characters, strings, whatever. But you should know what they are, okay? Strings are basically um, strings. They, they're not little, you know, they're not, you know, strings where you actually tie something up. They're strings like, for example, hello world, period, that is a string. It's, it is just a, com a combination of, of words, characters, numbers. It, 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 that's a string. Int is int is short for integer, right? So what I did right now is I created. Okay, now this might be confusing to you guys if you don't know what the heck you're doing. What does this mean? I created a in, a variable named integer. However, it has no value in it. So. What happens if I type in system.out.print and I said, I want, what do you want me to print? I want you to print integer. Well, what is the computer going to do? And, we'll, and it, well, okay, it gives me an error here and it says the local variable integer ha may not have been initialized. Well, that is exactly what's wrong. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. Do not rely on this, uh, this little stupid error thing um, completely because what we're using right now is an IDE, which is basically like training wheels for programming. So what you are doing right now is this thing is giving you everything that's wrong with your code. In the future, you're not going to have this. In the future, you're going to be working in a command line or you're going to be coding in, in, a, in a notepad editor where you're not going to have all these nice things telling you there's something wrong with your code, right? Basically, I'll tell you why it's giving an error. It's not, in, and that's true, it is not initialized. And th what that means is integer has no value to it so what you did here when we when we said int integer we basically allocated memory for that variable however that variable has no value so if you tell the computer print out what integer is the computer doesn't know what integer is and it's going to give you an error so when we try to run it let's we'll see what happens it already tells you there's errors with this and remember in the future this the, the computer is not going to tell you there's an error you're going to have to rely on yourself because this is not universal. They don't have this for everything. So then it gives you an error, right? It's not, you know, something has not been initialized. So what we want to do, or you want to get a good habit of, is, you know, just give it zero. You know, if you're going to use a thing and you start it out, you start it at zero. So when you print it out, it'll say hello world zero. Because this is hello world, this is printing out zero. Keep that in mind. See how we're going. Okay, we're doing pretty good. Okay, now now these are integers. Now, integer equals zero. So basically, we're going to now, now we're going to uh, start manipulating with integers. What we are going to do is we're going to have int a. No, we're going to have this called a and s, meaning zero. Okay, and then this gives you an error. We see how I changed the name. This thing doesn't make sense anymore. What's integer? I don't know. I just changed the name of their variable. Um, we're gonna have this ANS, okay? So what we're okay now? Um, actually, let me okay make this get last. Okay, so int equal uh, ANS equals zero. Int A equals one. Int B equals two. Now. You know how basic math. You know how they talked about how programming is very basic. It's basic math. This is how basic it really actually gets. Because, you know, what if you wanted to add A and B? How would you How would you get you know, the answer, right? 
Um, well, uh, let me show you how easy it is. So basically what you want to do, okay, so you see how I separated out my code already? The code on the top basically is for declarations, initializations, that's what this is. This is all initializing um, integers, ns equals zero, a equals one, b equals two, right? So what if we want to um, re, uh, when I, no, when I go a, a, uh, a and s is now going to equal a plus b. What, and then I tell it to print out ANS. What does it print out? Is it going to print out zero, or is it going to print out something else? And what is it going to be something else? Is it going to be one and two? Is that what it's going to print out? Or is it actually going to print out one plus two? We'll find out. And you see, ANS turns to three. Well, obviously it's three because you added one and two, right? There you go, this. And what I'm doing right now, is I'm adding in comments. One and A and B, which equals three. So what you want to do is if you want to make your code you know clear to people who don't know what you're writing, you add in comments and if they read your comments they will immediately know what you're talking about or or what your code is doing. Okay? It's very easy, very simple. Now now we went over tools, we went over variables, we went over output. Um, I just went over assigning values, right? Um, next we are going to basically uh, go to relationships. And relationships are very simple. Um, relationships and if statements are going to have a lot to do with each other because they rely on each other to work. Now, now since we added one and two, I'm I'm going to um you know let's find out if it's uh, if something is even or odd right so basically I've went over um, integers right now maybe in the next uh, video I'm going to introduce you to uh, basically strings um, it's a very simple stuff but if you understand the integers you know longs and shorts are very similar because they're just numbers now in the past. The reason why there's a differentiation between integers, longs, and short is because before they had to conserve memory because memory used to be a lot more expensive than it is now. I mean, now you probably have four, six, eight, ten gigabytes of RAM in your computers, whereas before it would cost you thousands of dollars just to have a couple megabytes. So you, get, you know, the times change and the way we program also changes. So we, we're not as strict as what we once used to be. So these um, integers, integers. Okay, so we did that. Relationships. Let's see. What do if statements? Okay. So, what if I only wanted to? Now, this is really stupid, but what's going on? What if I only wanted to print out the number or the answer if it was bigger than ten? This is what we do. This is a called a conditional. If now whatever conditional you you, know, you put it in a parenthesis. So if only if if um, answer is what. If you're doing a comparison, if you're doing relationships, you have to put two double equals. Or if you're saying if you want them to be equal, you can't just put if a and s equals, you know, three or five or whatever. You know, if you're gonna check, you know, to be equal, you have to put equal and equal, two equals. That's what that is. So if basically what this is saying, if the answer is equal to two print out the answer, which is kind of pointless. But I, what I am showing you here is the function of if statements. These if and conditionals, they have a lot to do with each other. So, And I want you to get into a good habit of always, when you do these if stuff, because right now we have a single line, which which uh, basically means that if it, if it meets this condition, then this line is going to you know work. However, if you have another, you know, say another line of code here, uh, this line of code will work no matter what because this conditional is only affecting this one line. Now, how you differentiate and how you how you make this more clear to yourself is if you if you use a brackets every single time you have a um, you know you, you have a conditional or same thing with when you when you're creating a new uh, uh, method when you have main you see how they they have these little brackets here and end bracket there. That's how you know. Right, so you have brackets there, and you also have brackets here. So basically, if you take this line and you 
you know, put it inside the brackets, then only this, you know, code, well, whichever, whatever code is inside these brackets will, will depend on this conditional. That's what that means. That's, it's very basic. Don't overthink it. If you overthink it, you're going to just fuck yourself up. That's your fault. Don't overthink it. Okay, so a, uh, so I'm going to make this easier. So a, if answer is less than or equal to 10, or wait, less than or equal to 10, why is there a 2? We want to take off the 2. If it's less than or equal to 10, then do this. Then print this out. So, you know, this is going to work all the way until that happens. Basically, 10 plus 1 is going to be what? It's going to be 11, right? So we'll see what happens. We'll run this code. And you only see Hello World. Well, what happened to this? Well, this happened to be bigger than 10. So answer happened to be bigger than 10. So this line of code is skipped completely because the condition was not met. The condition is, if answer happens to be less than or equal to 10, then this will work. If it doesn't, it will ignore it completely. You see how this works? Now, now let's see. Now uh, we're going to do this. If answer is exclamation mark equal to 10, what that means is if answer is not 10, print something out. So it will basically, if it is anything else but 10, this line will run. That's what that uh, that relationship means. Not equal to. Exclamation mark equal is not equal to. You can have an exclamation mark less than, which means larger than, which means is not less than. That just means the opposite. So if I run this again, it will print out 11 because why? Because answer is 11, and and 11 is not equal to 10. Now I could have I could have put one and you know six, because that's seven and it's still not 10, and it would have worked. However, if it was four plus six, which is 10, your code will not show the answer. That is what um, that is what that is. Okay. Now, now that we went over if statements and the relationships. Um, how do we check if the answer happens to be even or odd? Um, that is what you're going to use on the, uh, let's see, what's that thing called? Uh, forgot how, how we use this. Is equal to Uh, we'll go on that into another video because right now I just I'm, I'm, I have a I'm drawing to a blank mind right now so so if it's equal so we'll stick with if it's equal to to ten which it is and it'll print out okay now we are going to go into uh, multiple methods now this is important because you know it's very nice if we have everything you know all in main but. It's not very organized, and it's not very, you know, actually, it's not professional at all. So you want to find the end of main. How do you do that? So you just go to main here. You click on the top of the... Now, this is why it's very, you know, this is very easy, and, like, and how it's really important you have to understand what I'm doing here, because when you're done with this, when you're, you're done using Java, and you're, and you're out of the, 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 uh, inter, uh, the program interface, you're going to be working on, in a command line, and you're not going to have mouse control. You're just going to have keyboard and mouse. And that's all you're going to see. You're going to have a black screen and keyboard and mouse. Okay. So now we're going to make another method. So I get uh, public. Now the reason why it has void is it doesn't want a return. It doesn't want an answer. So public static. And we want a... Um, this, what we're going to do is call the method. We want it to return a value, so we're going to have an int. Uh, we're just going to call add. And yeah, we're going to do that. And remember, we want to use brackets. And it's going to and it's going to like yeah, we're just going to read return zero just just so we can satisfy this thing. And oh, yeah, hang on a minute. Let's see, that is that. That. Oh, this is giving me an error here. Yep. Public class main. This is making more sense. 
Okay, that makes sense. So since the thing ends, the, the, okay, the, so main is actually. So okay, I see what I did. Okay, so I did something really stupid. I named the class main. Don't do that. You want to name the class something else other than main because you're gonna get confused. Because I just got confused by myself. So basically, I have two mains here. The class is main, and this is also main, so that can be confusing. So what you want to do is differentiate the, these two. This is a class. This is a method. So you want to end where the method ends. So the method ends here, and it has this. But um, okay, so we are going to have this thing. Just tell us system dot print. Um, got to the second method. 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 And sometimes when you're programming, you want to do this because it will give you an idea of where your code actually is, so you so you're not really confused what's going on when you're um, you know. When you're doing this, well, you know, what's going on? Public in add. So, actually here, we're going to go void. And I'm not going to use it, so I commented it out. Um, got to the second method. So, okay, now, now this is the if statement. Um, so basically, if answer equals 10, we're going to ignore that for now. And after that, we are going to make a call. We want to go here. We want to go add. Um, so we're going to go add something. So this add is a call to this method. So basically, remember, 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 remember. It always starts at main. It will never start over here. So don't be thinking if I made public static void add, you know, this new method, don't be thinking that if I click the run, it's going to just go here immediately. That's not what's going to happen. It always goes to main. Main will, you know, run through this list. It goes to top to bottom. Um, and and then at the very end, it will you know it will call the add uh, method. So you go to here, calls the main method. So basically, what this does is it when it runs this code, it pops over here. So for example, if I commented out, or if it, or if I didn't write that at all, you know, because whatever you put, okay, when when I do these comments, whatever is after the two slashes is completely ignored by the compiler. It is completely ignored by the computer when you run the code. So if I run this code, nothing will happen. I mean, it will run main. Remember, this is main. This says hello world in 10. But it doesn't go to the second method. And why doesn't it go to the second method? Well, because I didn't call it. It Because, you know, I commented out. Now that I took off the comment, it calls add. And add is just this new, um, this, this new method. So if I run it now, hello world 10 got to the second method. OK, obviously, so I forgot to print ln. So what happens when you forget to print ln? It puts it together. So if you print ln here, this will be on the second line. We'll run it again. Hello world, got to the second method. Now, why is this important? This is important because when you're running your program or when you create programs to do specific tasks, you want to, you want to you know separate your code. You know what's this part of the code doing compared to that part of the code? So you're not have so you don't have one giant uh, main method. When you have one giant main method, your code looks very ugly and it looks very unprofessional and, and no one knows what your code is. It's really hard to understand. So what you want to do is separate out your code so that people, when they read your code, they know what you're doing. So top here, everything is initialized. Um, bottom here, whatever. Right. So okay. So basically, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to. Um, I'm going to I'm going to uninitialize answer take that off I am going to and um declare another answer here set it equal to zero so it doesn't have you know so it doesn't fuck up and what I am going to do is give it arguments so now instead of um, having you know just just uh, um, you know just calling add you know why do people have functions if they're just going to you know separate their code out well this is why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some reason now. You're not going to just do this for no reason. There's a reason why we do this. So, okay, so got to second method. Well, basically, I am copying and paste. I'm taking out the, uh, the, the, the conditional, putting it down here, so just so we can see what's going on. Okay, so now, um, ANS equals this and that. So we're going to take this off also. We want to basically. This is what you're going to do, and, and basically, this is very simple. But this is what you're going to do, and in, in more advanced applications, we are going. Okay. 
So the reason why it says A and B, there's something wrong, is because it doesn't know what it is. So when we do this, we want to, okay, when we, when we call the, the, the add method, and you will see why it's called add, because we are actually adding the two numbers, and that is why they are called different methods. Different methods do different things, and we are specializing this add method to add the two numbers we have. So we wanted to send A and B, A comma B, um, why is it giving me an error? Oh, it's not applicable int and int. The reason is because we don't have an int thing here. So we'll just say int A, int B. And, um, okay, now I want to tell you this right now. This is confusing for a lot of people because they don't pay attention to their code. They either rush it, they don't think, they don't do whatever. What I have here, the names, int A and int, uh, int uh, B. They don't have to be the same. I could have said int B and int C. That could have been the same thing, right? So I could have went B and C, and it would have still have added the same two values together. What does matter is the order, right? If I have A as first and B as second, then you better bet B and C has to be in the same order as A and B. You see how this is first and that is first, that is second, that is second? That, that you know, I can't put the, if I put this C and I put this B, everything is gonna be mixed up. No one's gonna know what the heck you were doing, right? So that makes no sense if you you know. So what I'm saying is the order will matter. The, not the order up here. I think I did. I explained it wrong. Don't pay attention to that order. That order doesn't. It, I don't give a shit what that order is. I'm talking about this. Okay. So if you send if you said add and you send these two arguments, this is the receiving end. So when it receives it, it doesn't care what it's called. It doesn't care about anything. All it cares about is is the type and the order. So you you could have in you know A and B, but you can't have say. You can't say char. That's going to give you an error. It's going to give you an error here because it's not applicable for the. Okay, now remember what I'm telling you. This is only, you know, going to show up on this IDE because this is a babysitting programming thing. Okay, in the future, you're not going to have these things telling you what, what's wrong with your code. You will have to know by 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 basically experience or by yourself. So to simple so to simple um, simplify these things, I'm going to change it back to A and B so we know exactly what we're doing. And you don't have to guess, but I'm saying, but you have to remember this. If you don't remember this, you're well, you're screwed anyways. Um, so if answer equals to ten, and then it prints out the answer. Now I'll run this again. Got the second method ten. Okay, so I did the same thing again. I didn't print ln over here. So if I print ln, hello world, got the second method, and it did the math for us. And how did it know that if the if the answer was ten or not? Well, because we remember we sent in these arguments. If we didn't send in the arguments, this method would have nothing to use. It wouldn't know what to do because bec the reason it knows is because we sent in A and B. Arguments are basically just another way of you know you're sending information so this so this method can do its job. Because if you have the method by itself and you're, and you're telling it to add, you know, part A and part B, and you don't tell it what it is, it won't do. It, it won't know what to do, and it'll crash. But if, this is why we have int A and int B. These are called arguments, and th and this is how you send arguments into methods to do their job. Now, what I showed you earlier was I had everything inside one main uh, method. Okay, I know I'm using the word function and method at the same time. They mean the same thing. Don't be worried if you don't, you know. Because I'm, I'm I work with multiple languages, different languages. You know they're called they're called functions. They're, in Java they're called methods, whatever. They're the same thing. And okay, I'm going to clarify even more. What 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 do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, this is what I mean. This is one method. If you see here, public add add itself, it's called a method. And how do you know? See how this highlights it for you in real life? It won't highlight it for you. You will have to know this by. What is a method? It is any is everything in between the two brackets that come after you declare the uh, method. So you see here, it start, this is the opening bracket and this is the closing bracket. So everything in here is one method. Everything in here, okay, no, that's not the right one. Everything in here is one method. Now remember, everything starts at main. So it will it, it will start here and it'll go down, calls add, pops into here, goes down. Now you know multiple methods, you know if statements, you know relationships, and you know how to assign values to different um, variables, 
and you know basically if you if it's not declared or if it's not initialized meaning it has no value you can't really work with it unless you give it a value later in the code and then you ask the computer to use it because you can't tell the computer this is that and this and that you know it's not gonna work um now I haven't really gone over scope I'm gonna go over scope now if I had didn't include a and B you can't automatically assume that if you if you initialize a and B at a different remember at a different uh, method that it will know what a and B is in a different method a and B if I didn't have given it as an argument is only visible to this uh, to this part of the code to, to main that is why we refer to it as methods it is completely independent it is you you cannot you know describe something here and and have it be ex expected to see something in here without giving it as an argument so if, if I had a getting argument, argument, that is why we got the error we had earlier. Remember how uh, when I changed this to something else, and I mean uh, when I, no not this. If I if I um you know if I change this to char, or if I or if I had nothing in here, if I had like for example if I said void, if there were if, if there were nothing in here, you would have an error, because this makes no sense because you have something in here and it doesn't work, and yeah things won't work like that. So you need to have um, they have to be declared in the same method or you can send them along as arguments and they will know exactly what a and b is because you actually sent it you sent you're saying go to this and bring along a and b and and you come to this add thing and and you take in a and b so you know what a and b is so you can do functions so you can you can perform addition subtraction multiplication whatever you want to do and this is the same thing with arrays, which we're, I am going to introduce later. In arrays is completely, uh, it's, 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 it's not as easy to conceptualize as this. So just remember what I show you here, and it's gonna be, everything is going to be a lot easier for you. So today, we went over tools, variables, output, and signing values, and relationships. I didn't go over every relationship. I'm going to definitely go into more in the next video. If statements and intro to multiple methods which you are going to have, you know, because you, 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 we're, we're going to work with more than just two methods. We, we can have in add, in subtract, in multiply, in whatever. We can even have, you can have the, like, uh, ordering numbers, you know, what is what. So, that is that. Man, that was a long talk. Okay, so, see you in the guys in the next video. Hopefully you guys understood everything I went over today.